Okay, now we want to look at function currying. This is a concept, and as long as you understand the basics of how a function works and how a return statement inside of a function works, you'll be absolutely fine with this. Um, I've got two videos on the basics of functions and on the return statement. Uh, the links will be down inside the comments if you take a look there. So, function currying, what is that? Well, it relies upon the fact that in JavaScript, functions are first-class objects. And that means, just like strings, numbers, booleans, objects, arrays, other data types, you can pass a function to another function, and you can have a function that returns a function from it. So in the same way that if I was writing a function, let's say function x, and I was going to pass something to that function. Some variable is going to be passed and put inside this variable a. That a could contain a string, a number, a boolean, an array, an object, any data type you want, including another function. So there's function x, here's function y, and when we call function x to make it run, we can actually pass the function y to it. And then inside of function x, we can make that function run. So this line right here, this will execute function y. So this function right now is not doing anything. console.log y inside of here just to see that it's going to happen. So console.log so we can see that function x is running right here. We are calling function x. Okay, so let's just see that run. There we go. x and then y. Both of them are being run. We only call it function x. So this calls function x. We're passing function y into this, and then saying that, hey, yeah, okay, we've got function x is currently running, and then we're saying, you know that thing that you passed in? Run that. It's a function. This is going to make function y run, and that's why we get both of these comments here. Okay, so that's the fact that functions are first-class objects, so we can pass them to functions. We can also return them from functions. So we could return the number 123. We could return the string A. We could return a Boolean. We can return whatever this was. Or if we declared a new thing inside of here, we can return a variable which contains a function. So down here, if I said let B be the result of running the function X, a is going to be passed back to here, and we can tell B to run. So B is the result from function A, which just happens to be Y, because Y was passed into it. So this right here is the same as running function Y. So there we go, X, Y, Y. So X ran, inside of X, Y was run, and then this returned the function y to the variable b, and then we're running it. So that's why we get the x, y, y. All right, now, function currying. I'm going to move this down and just comment this block of code out. We'll leave it in there so that it's in the gist later on for you guys. OK, and then inside here, function currying. What is currying? Well, it's similar to what we were doing here. We've got a function, and it's able to run that function. It's able to return a function inside of it. So I'm going to create a function called greet. And I'm going to pass a string to that function. So if I was to call greet with hi, So inside of here, I meant to do the uh, console.log. So we're doing function greet here. 
it's being called right here. Hi is the message, and console log message. There we go. There's the string. No, no real uh, surprises here. Now, what I want to do is, let's say I've got a situation where I want to be able to call this greeting, and I want to be able to pass in a salutation in multiple languages. So maybe Swedish, English, Spanish, and German. I want to be able to call four different versions of this function. And I want to be able to call the person's name. So we could do something like this and put the person's name and pass in the two parameters like this and write it out. But let's say I want to set up these functions. So I want to make a German one, an English one, a Spanish one, and a Swedish one. Because at this point in my code, I don't know the names. I don't know how many names there are, I don't know how many times it's going to be used, and I don't want to necessarily write four different functions, one for English, one for German, one for Swedish, one for Spanish. I don't want to do that. I don't want to create four functions just so somebody else has the four functions and they have to pick from that necessarily. I want to try and keep my code as minimal as possible. So the message that I'm passing in is actually going to be used here. I'm creating another function inside of this function. Inside here, name. This is going to be the name of the person that I'm saying whatever message to. But because of the way these are nested, my function on the inside is going to be able to create a closure and access this variable right here. So I can say console.log message name. Now, I don't have to put these both here. Let's say I don't know what they're going to be. I'll say let English equal greet hi. So this is going to take the word hi, put it inside of here. The word hi is going to be used inside here to write out hi and then something else. What's being returned is this function. Just like down here, we were returning a, what was passed in we were returning. But this is a function. I'm returning a function that didn't exist anywhere else. This function comes back and is put into here. So inside of English, this is the resulting function. I can go inside here and say Tom. Now, when I run this code, run this page, greet is going to be run. The string hi is going to be put inside of here, and then a reference to it is going to be kept. And this function right here with the variable name is going to be returned and put into here. English has now become a function. And when I call it, Tom is the name. This will be the original hi message that I sent in. So it's kind of like having this inner function that says hi name. That's effectively what we're doing with these two lines of code. If we run that, hi Tom. I'm saying I'm going to use the message hi. That's my English message. That's going to be saved as part of this. If I say let Svenska greet, hey, if I say let Espanol without the accent over the N, that's going to be hola, and let Deutsch be greet tag. Okay, I have now created, let me just move this down below here, I've created four functions from this greet was used to create this function and the value that was passed in, these four values, are going to be saved inside the function that's returned. So English, Svenska, Espanol, and Deutsch, those are now four 
brand new functions which will accept a single string. So I can say Svenska and use Inga as the name. Espanol, say hi to Carlos and Deutsch uh, Matthias. Okay, save. Run that. Here we go. Hi, Tom. Hey, Inga. Hola, Carlos. And tag Matthias. So we have four brand new functions that we have created here with the greet. So English, Svenska, Espanol, and Deutsch. Those have become functions which will be waiting for this parameter. So when I pass in those names, they get used. And the message parameter, that was the original one right here that we passed in from these four lines. And that's function currying. It's creating a brand new function by returning it from an outer function. The returned element becomes the inner function that you can use. And the powerful thing about it is you get this saved variable, this closure, which saves this original value for you to use at a later time. So if you don't know what both the values are, or if you need to create a whole bunch of functions that have similar functionality, this is a great way to kind of manufacture those functions for you so that you can use them at a later time.